This is a video on testing blood sugar of a cat. This is Louie. Louie is diabetic. Um, he also happens to be FIV positive, not that that really matters, but I have a couple diabetic cats and I just overkill. I use separate supplies for Louie. Um, just in case I would have any blood, I don't want to get any of his blood mixed with any of the other cat's blood. Anyway, Louie's going to demonstrate home testing. I highly recommend having a spot, if possible, where you always test him. Louie's spot is on this little tray here, and he's very good. When I tap the tray, he knows it's time to get tested, and he hops up here to be tested. Um, I, you can use pretty much any glucometer. Any glucometer will work. There are special glucometers made just for pets. Personally, I've compared them to over-the-counter glucometers used for people, and there's not really any significant difference. Um, it doesn't really matter that we know that the blood sugar is exactly a number. It's to give you an idea of what the number will be. So, I have all our supplies here. I use this meter. It's a meter made for people called the True Track meter. I like it because it doesn't use a huge amount of blood. It uses one microliter. You can get meters that use less. There's also meters that use a lot more. It has strips that sip the blood, which makes things a lot easier, rather than strips that you have to drop the blood into a hole. Um, I like to use a lancet pen. Um, some people just use a lancet without using the pen. Personally, I like using the lancet pen. And we have a lancet here. So we just load the lancet into the lancet pen. Um, you want to ideally not touch, once you take off the cap, not touch the lancet to anything because it is sterile. And I just put the cap on. Louie is what I call not a good bleeder. He doesn't bleed very easily from his ears, so I usually leave it set all the way to the five. Um, a lot of cats don't need it that high. I like to use a little bit of cotton, um, a little paper towel, or um, napkin, anything like that. I like to hold that behind the ear. That way if it turns red, I know I went all the way through the ear. I usually just warm his ear just by rubbing it with my fingers. Some people like to use a sock filled with rice that they microwave. You want to make sure your glucometer is coded to your strips. Um, for the True Track, there is a little chip that goes in here. I want the number on that chip to match the number on my vial of strips. It's also a good idea to check your strips on occasion using a control solution. So, you just insert the strip into the glucometer. When it's ready for this glucometer, it will show me a little drop at the bottom to know it's ready for blood. See the little Thing on the bottom showing me it's ready. Then I hold Louie's ear. I want to get, I want to poke right along the edge here. Louie's ears are black, so you can't really see the vein other than you kind of see a little up, ver, a little bump up. But it's not really important that I see the vein. I don't need to hit the vein. I need capillary blood. For Louie, the thing that works best is right along the edge, right above the flappy part. So I just place the lancet. I caught the lancet by pulling it apart. Place the lancet pen right along the edge of the ear and pop. And you'll see that blood starting to come. If it wasn't bleeding well, I would kind of push up to make more blood come, but I have got plenty of blood there. I don't know if you can see that. That's plenty of blood. Just touch the edge of the strip to the blood. It soaks it up. Set the meter aside. I give Louie a little bit of pressure to stop the bleeding. It's been very good until this far. And I'm watching the meter count down here. And his blood sugar is 66. That's pretty good. Um, he had insulin about six hours ago, so this is probably as low as it will go. 66 is pretty a pretty normal number. Most of my non-diabetics test in the 60s on this meter. And that's it. Very simple. Thank you, Louie.